can yes. relate to what yes. saying. Yes. I, I, I think I see the, the flippy side of what he's trying to bring into it. Mm -hmm. So Jade's own is like a project because no, it's... No, I know. They're yes. not the same, the same But they're related. The Response will hit both. Yes. yes. And I was going to say that exactly. True. Let me rephrase what I understand from your question so that you see. So you're saying that... Sit down, my dear. So you're saying that how do you deal with life that you understand that this is not like you said use the example that they were living a natural life they were waking up they were looking for their goods little did they know there was kingship so how do you there are a lot of things that i'll use to answer your question you see the advantage of the christian are you listening you know jesus said something make i remove glasses small you know, Jesus said something. He said, blessed are you. Are you listening? Yes. Let me check anyway. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you, you know, Jesus said something. I said, blessed are you, for your ears hear these things. He said, there are many people who desire to hear. Do you know that? This conversation that we're having, somebody is somewhere, and what he's having in his hearing is shisha, babes, burukutu. Useless discussions. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? So I also know Buruku Twins. <laughs> do you know that some people now, that as, they are, as we are talking now, what they are hearing is nonsense. nonsense. That's Nothing. So when you are here, I want you to be glad you are here. Yes, sir. I want you to put your mind. You know, some people come here and they just listen and listen and say, "It was nice. It was nice." It doesn't resonate in them. Yes. Uh -huh. You can't force anybody. You only to just expose them to your teaching, to where you are drinking. You know, someone just looks at you and say, "You are living well." But when you now bring him to what you are drinking, say, "Is this what you are drinking?" There's nothing here. That's the problem that you must not be guilty of. Because what I'm about to tell you now will help you. Are you listening? Yes, That's why I like questions. You see, there are many things to that your question, Shadrach. The first thing is that you have the advantage of hearing what you've heard, that there's something called purpose. That there's something called purpose. It all adds up. It all adds up. When we quote that scripture, Romans 8, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Similarly, what I just said earlier on, just a few minutes ago, is that you are living a natural life. You think what you did was just come to church. You just sat down. You were just listening. It looks natural. I was talking about having supernatural naturally earlier on. Uh -huh. It looks natural that... You went out on one Saturday evening and looking back 15 years ago, that is the person you've now married. It was just a casual evening. No. What looked casual had a destiny involved. What looked like a random sitting down under a tree and waiting for my next lecture, I met a woman that, listen, let me now tell you something I probably have not told you. If I've told you, fine. I was recounting it to my son the other day. You know, I was planning to get into Unilag. And then my dad did not support my financial obligations and all that. So I was crying. Now you are crying, like, Lord. I wanted to get, that was in the year 1999. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. I was trying to get 1999, yes, 2000, yes. So, yes, so I was crying, I was praying. Are you listening? Yes, sir. You know, they said the secrets of men are in their stories. Uh -huh. I don't want to just be telling you Bible. I want to be telling you some stories so that you know how to use it also. I was crying. I didn't have money. I didn't want to go back for an HND. I didn't want to go back. For me, I'm not, you know, what Allah. So I was angry, I was crying. By the beach, the lagoon front of Unilag. If you know, some of us don't know there's a Unilag lagoon front. There's somewhere inside there. 
So I was crying. Just imagine me. Man, I was a past, young pastor. I was already preaching around. I was very angry. So I was crying. I was like, Father, this is not, you know, I was frustrated. <laughs> and then I, after crying, I sat down. You know, after you finish crying, you should come down. <laughs> 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 Only you. <laughs> so when I finished the crying now, I now heard the Spirit of God say to me, why are you crying? Get up. Go back. So I went back to Ibadan, Polytechnic Ibadan. So I was angry. You know that kind of angry. I didn't hear anything after crying, you know. I would have thought he would say something. I didn't hear anything. I just had to go back. So I was on the campus. You know when you now get back to the campus, you're angry. What am I doing here? <laughs> so I heard. The Lord said to me, he said, I'm going to give you three assignments here. One, you need to know you are going to pastor a campus church. Number two, you are going to be the overall best students. Number three, you will meet your wife here long before I met her. Are you listening? The consolation of that instruction. So when I was living out everyday life, I was not saying, where's the wife? That was not what I was living. I mean, do you understand? Yes, That's the role prophecy plays in guiding your behavior. So I, I just sat down under the tree, and I saw a fine girl reading books, wearing this thing, wearing one leather belt, tilted on the waist, and you know she had the hips. You know that kind of thing? She was just going, I just, just, just called my guy. So she did not know I was calling her. Do you understand? I just say, call me a Jiblo. I told you about the story. <laughs> Jiblo was the guy handling virtues for me that time. Jiblo, come here. Go and find out who that baby is. Do you understand? So Jiblo, very faithful lawyer gentleman, you know. You, you don't know that's the product that brought you. <laughs> Quiet, my friend. You are talking. So that's how I went to... My point is that I did not live like heaven has my wife. No. God still allowed me to live my daily life. I still drank kunu. I still ate puff puff, you know. I still lived my normal life. In that time, it was not ice cream. It was kunu. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ice cream is upgrade. <laughs> so, my point is that from what you're saying, you hit Allen Avenue. To you, it looks like a normal day. But you see, prophecy, are you listening? Yes, sir. Prophecy helps us set expectations. The day it will come, you might not know. But you know that the word has gone ahead of you. So for example, when you are going in and out, if prophecy tells you you will get married, no matter how old you are, you are going to get that married. So prophecy helps us live consciously. That's my point. Prophecy helps us live consciously. Not with the consciousness of, this is my wife. No, you're just doing your normal life, but you know you are in tandem with God's will. Give me that Romans 8, 28. So you see, is it up, Abby? Let's read it together, everybody. Want to go? And we know that all things work together. So all things, including working on Allen. The person you were supposed to meet, you missed him at Ojota. You did not know you were supposed to meet him. Until you met at Allen, and you're like, this is the person again. And then, by reason of natural instincts, you reach out, can I meet you? Ah, are you the person? Oh, that, that thing that looked casual. That coming into virtues that looked casual. That meeting someone, that, that response to what looked despisable. That's what God uses to work all things together for your good. So you just thought you were going for a meeting. But you met somebody who said, come for this meeting. And from this meeting, you never know what will happen from here. So God, in his, I told you before, God cannot tell you everything. He will be partial. He will be flaunting his rules. He has to make you discover the journey by blocking the beginning and blocking. That's why God never said, I'm the middle. He said, I'm the alpha and the omega. What happens in between is dependent on your cooperation. 
You can choose to react. You say, I'm, oh, that's this is, I I just said, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I have one daughter in this ministry. You know, she, she's wishing she had come since. The other one was telling me that she wished, she wished that she never left. Do you, do you get? What happened? The things that you are supposed to respond to, may they not irritate you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know? The thing that you are supposed to respond to. I remember when I met my mother, I was telling her, babe, let me show you my world. Let me show you my world. If you see who was talking. I was wearing one yellow shirt. My friend, why are you laughing? It was a very nice shirt. Yellow shirt and gray trouser. Mama. Gray trouser. And a very nice sandal. You say yellow and green, go share. <laughs> Guess what? Mama was telling me some days back, I'm glad I met you. That's unprovoked, though. She just came back. She said, I just thought about it. That what if I didn't respond to you? Do you understand that kind of thing? But our daily life, we are meeting ourselves. We just like, I beg, oh, 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 You know? The reason I'm saying so is that God might be working things for you still. And you, you stop born coconut head. God has been struggling. That, okay, come and see this church. You say, I no do. Come and see this one. I no do. Come and see this one. No, in that David, do I want? <laughs> <laughs> that is how life has slowed down for you. Wow. Now it looks like God is not active because what is calling in you, you are not responding to. The natural events of business, that just the instinct of cooperating with God, of listening to your man of God properly, finding a quotable quote he said. You went for a meeting that you did not know. They just asked questions. You just said your own no. They said, Mark, that guy, can we have him on our board? That looked very natural. Many of us don't li- know that as we are living like this consciously, heaven is watching us. Okay, look at how um, Joseph met Mary. Babe, make we marry now. Say, huh? <laughs> I'm still very young. Would you tell my daddy? He said, and I saw Joseph will come again. If now you're about him, they would say stone window. You know that kind of thing? <laughs> stone window. <laughs> stone window. <laughs> Joseph. Eh, you know what he, you know that count. That's if it's house, come outside. Eh? Then they will go inside the tree. No, leave me alone. No, 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 you know, no. Just, just imagine. I saw we can't even imagine. Your mind a block. You see, so, 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 uh, no, no. Before we knew what was happening, heaven was watching Joseph toast Mary. I said, now the person whom we go use be that. And then they appeared to Mary. Mary, Mary, we want to use your womb bowl. Then they went back to tell Joseph, Joseph, don't be afraid, though. We are the ones behind you. <laughs> now I walk. Elizabeth, the elder cousin of Mary, was aged and fast stricken in age, the Bible says. Heaven remembered her. It looked like a coincidence, but there was a purpose to it. We are in this room today. It looks like a coincidence. When I was studying, God is my witness, I never thought that I would stand one day and say it's Virtuous Christian Center. I was just reading Bible. I was just reading. I will mark Bible say, what does this mean? <laughs> I don't understand, Lord. You need to see my old Bibles. <laughs> Father, what are you saying here? Oh, I will now connect. Mark ref- I was literally marking reference Reference First Chronicles to two. You, <laughs> you don't know who you are dealing with. I was studying like I wanted to write exam on the Bible. I never thought the day would come. I didn't even know why I needed it. I don't know if you guys get what I'm saying. Here. Yes, but something in me was asking, go back, read that thing again. I will write it carefully. Confirm that scripture from the Greek lexicon. Who sent you? Who sent you? And we go back to Esau. That time, our work was strong, strong exhaustive con- concordance. Our joy was to be able to tell you the differences of Greek words for one word. 
<laughs> is that I realize that that thing can be confusing. Just relax. Because if you overtouch teach knowledge, it confuses the soul. So I don't. But the me that studied it, I was curious. What put it inside me? I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here. And that's the same way I'm saying to you that you need to watch out for your appetites. See, after me say your appetites. Your appetite. What I mean by that is the things you like and the things you respond to. 1 Corinthians 2, from verse 13. I hope this is blessing your heart. Yes, so, for example, a friend has been calling. That's why some of us say we respond late. And as old as you get, there are some things that you are not able to respond to, like if you are responded at a child. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? There's a way a child catches the fire easily and better than when an adult is catching the fire. However, it's in God's hands. See what it says. Which things we speak not, in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, which, which, not in the words which man's teacher, wisdom teacheth, beg your pardon, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Listen, you no, know, verse next. But the natural man, who is the natural man? That person who is undiscerning, doesn't even know, he doesn't even know what's going on. Do you understand what I'm saying here? The natural guy received not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? It says they are irritating to him. They are foolishness. They are nonsense. What are you saying? This thing you are saying is nonsense. That's how they say all this Bible you are listening to. Is it by Bible? Is it by Bible? You think, uh, which Bible did the Lord must read? You see, that kind of thinking. Are you listening? Yes, sir. That thing that does not make the word of God make sense is a spirit that sits in the hearts of people. You know, matter what you say, this thing, eh, is, is, this thing is, not, is not a scripture to be quoted. It's a principle to be ob observed. Yes. It's not a scripture to be, it's a principle to, that when things don't make sense to you, is to tell you that foolishness is around your corner. Mm. They are talking, you know, you don't get it. <laughs> I know that feeling of not getting it. When I enter some classes in science, chemistry, just not talking. And my mates will be answering questions. I'm like, when did they teach us? We are here to learn it. I, did, did, I, Kai, I don't know if you happen to know. Yes, when did they teach you that you are answering questions? They say, what is, what is, uh, let me, what title in physics? Give me the title in physics. Um, eh? No. Eh? Reverberation or sound waves. What is sound waves? Sound waves is the, ah! When did they teach us? I've never, I'm the class captain. <laughs> I take absentees. When did they teach you? That thing bothered me through. And I didn't have anybody to, it's now I can talk, because now I can. So, and when did they teach you people? One day I went to my, I've said it before now, my friend's house. Then I got there. The father, went, both talk, you know, small time. When I got there, I knocked, I saw the sister, I saw the father. I said, where is this gentleman? His name is Folusho. He's a neurosurgeon now. He's in UK. One of the few black neurosurgeons that the guy with close his eyes and open brains. Bloody guy. So we said, and he told us then that he wants to be a neurosurgeon. No, no, we say mistake. So that's how I got there. They said, where? I was waiting for my friend. Where is he? They say he's doing lesson. So... That I'm sitting here, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I said, Little wonder we get to class is saying, I. That's what I'm saying. Some of the things you are learning now, you are wondering why you are learning it until they throw you somewhere. <laughs> then you start to talk like somebody that's, you know, you know what you're saying, you know what I'm saying. That is not like that. It's like, ah, you, you know. Why? What happens is that God invites you with your desires. That's why you need to pray about the kind of things you desire. You need to pray about the kind of things you have appetite for. When it is carnality over spirituality, you will have problem. For example, when what you like is just pleasure, 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 pleasure. I used to watch people that like pleasure a lot because some people just don't like pain, either in an exercise or in agbo. Do you know what I'm talking about? Some people don't like the, anything painful, anything bitter. They just don't want it in their lives. 
And I will tell you, those that like such, that don't like such things, that don't like exercise, don't like bitter things, don't like discipline, don't like, you know, these things, usually eh, have some secret problems that only them have to nurture. I'm just telling you the truth. You may not like what I said, but it's the truth. I can't because of you now not say the truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? That bitterness you don't want to like, you will meet it somewhere. It will ask you, why didn't you like me before? I'm telling you the truth. This message of hope, this life we're speaking, that is irritating you, you will meet it in the future. They say, when I was talking, where was you? What were you doing? Look at what he was saying in Proverbs. He said, because you rejected wisdom, I have rejected you. Look at it now, Proverbs 1, verse 19, 20. That's my handkerchief, sir. You know? So, look at it, Proverbs 1, 19 and 20, so that we wrap up and close. Eh? See what it says, though? See what he was saying? So are the ways, okay, wisdom, uh, which one are you giving us? Go to 20. Uh, wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Are you listening? He said, she cried in the chief place of concourse. He's talking, he's talking. He said, in the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttered her words, saying, look how he said, though, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in the scorning, in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Stop, 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 go back. He said, some people delight, they, they call themselves scorners. You know scorners are people that make jest of everything. Yes. <laughs> vasto, 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 <laughs> You know, and, and you literally wonder, why are you laughing? What's funny? Eh? What's funny? <laughs> he said, if you do miracle now for us, I beg don't want that to wine. Now wine I want. You know, it looks like he's just jesting. Don't forget, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the way of the ungodly, nor standing in the ways of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scorn. Note that he's not the scornful, he's just seated in their seat. He's not the scornful, he's not the sinner, he's not the ungodly, he's just around. He enjoys the coming. You know, the Bible says there are some people that they, they are not the liars, but they, they like those that tell the lie. <laughs> Bible, very interesting. So he says, go back here. He says, and fools hate knowledge. When you see anybody hating knowledge, he's a fool. I didn't say. It's a principle. Not every scripture is for quoting, it's for instruction. Let's go to the next one. See, see what he says. Turn you at my reproof. I'm correcting you. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Now words, God will take reveal himself. Words. So if you don't like words, you are hating knowledge. If you are not liking words, words irritate you. Now when preaching, they come, you want to sleep. All those things is a sign of a devil on your shoulder. Because I have called you and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. See what he says. But you have set at not all my counsel. You have refused. He said, I would none of my reproof. See what he said. Though. See, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your fear comes. Now, so a bad rich. Yes. He said, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a wild wind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. See next verse. See next verse. Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. She said, I've been playing since, but I've been talking. Pastor has been talking. Seems sweat inside AC. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. She said, I've been talking since, but it looks like I'm a mumu. Don't worry. You see what he said. <laughs> Verse 30 and 31. Then I think it ends at 32. They will, not, they will none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. They did not do anything I was saying. I was talking, talking, talking. Why will God talk to you again other than wisdom? He said, therefore shall they eat of their, the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. He said, your device. You'll be filled with your devices. That's the last word. He said, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. So fools also prosper. That's not enough for God. Now, why am I doing this to us? In response to your question, I just, I hope, I hope somewhere along the line you've gotten answers. So your natural life should be lived consciously. That, Lord, there is something for me today. As you go out, trust, Lord. Help my responses to be correct. That's why when you start with prayer, it's better. Not that you start with a text, why didn't you come to work yesterday? Query. <laughs> Query. Answer within 24 hours. Why? Your day has altered. Sure you know. Yes. Or you start on with Twitter in the morning. And start to check Twitter. 
as God has a plan for you, are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, what you need to do is to live consciously that that plan is executing itself naturally. When you do anything very well, God is impressed to give you more. You meet somebody new. How are you today? You say, God bless you. Meet the person properly. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Don't despise people. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's not just for the spirit of you know that kind of behavior. Uh, no, that's not the spirit. It's that you are an excellent person and you give out excellence. Not that I'm, I don't know who will help me. I don't know who my helper is. My helper, my helper, there's something that makes me come into your... That's not why you are doing the right thing. You are doing the right thing because you know that you are a right person. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Come and say better amen. Amen. So that's the end of that scripture. So why, why I wanted to really take time to answer your question is that while you are now doing the right thing and you are not still not getting the right results, there might be something you need to adjust or you need to keep doing that thing continuously. One of the ways by which you know that you are no longer or you need an extra intervention is if you are doing that correct thing and you have lost your joy. There is a joy that comes with doing the right thing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, when joy is missing in doing the right thing, it's a signal it's time to check what you're doing. For example, as I'm doing this work now, eh, I cannot lie to you. As at Sunday and as at yesterday, I stand before God. I, I heard his voice say, well done, Alex. Well, I can tell you I'm doing... What's it last week Sunday? Last week Sunday, when I finished preaching, I had the Lord say to me, you have said what I asked you to say. I finished everything. I, I was, mama would hear. I, I, when, I'm in, when I'm not in alignment, I know it. You know that kind of thing? You know. As I'm like this, with these people, I have joy doing it. I have energy. <laughs> this kind of energy doing it. When I start to hit roadblock, it's a signal you need mentoring. And I go for mentoring sessions. Do you understand? There's nothing wrong with that. It's not pride. It's not shameful to ask for learning. I book mentoring sessions with my pastors. Are you listening? I say, sir, what do I do? As I'm talking to you, I have a retinue of what to be done. I am clear-headed. Do you get? And then as you're doing it, when you now start to face, what happens with it is that your joy is taken away from your obedience. You know when I talk about taking the air out of your wind? You know, you know, you know you can take hell, you know you can take humor out of a joke. Yes. Sure, you know. That's what happens when God wants to direct your path again. He takes the joy out of your obedience. And you'll be obeying. You just know that I'm dissatisfied. Something is missing. Some, then he leads you to prayer. I get what I'm trying to say here. Because some people they are dissatisfied, they'll just say, God is no longer here. God is still here. <laughs> he will never live here. It's your duty is to go and pray. Seek his face and get the next direction. Mm. And as you step out in that faith, you will find the joy come back to your spirit. Mm. You know why? Because his words come to us and drop joy into our hearts. That his word comes, it's joy in itself. Look at what it says. It says, I shall, the, the words that I find in Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16. The words, the words that I find and they became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. When your heart is no longer rejoicing, when your heart is no longer pumping adrenaline for what you're doing, then you need that, that curve of, of checking with God. Lord, what's going on? Are you going to have to say that words were very fun? And I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy, not the action, not the result. Your God's word is my joy and is my rejoicing. Look, trust me, life can be better for me. But as I am like this, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. I'm gr glad and grateful. I'm not even pretending right now. I, I can tell you before God, a man. Do you understand? Yes, but there have been times when I was doing the right thing and I was not getting the right results. I was doing the right thing. I'm not getting the right result. He has taken the joy out of the obedience so that you can come back and check. Then he gives you fresh instructions. Oh, yeah, go. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, That's how it works. All right, so he says, why? He says, rejoice of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I hope that blessed you a little. Yes, sir. Let's give the Lord a round of applause and appreciation. <laughs> so, just as a drop-off notes as we close. Follow-up question. 
Eh, time is ticking. You know. Oh yeah, quickly, quickly, sharp, sharp. No, it's just, it's just, uh, I want to know, so what's the advantage of, um, like, for example, this consciousness you are giving to Yes, me? yes, please. Uh, the advantage of this consciousness okay. of what's working in our everyday lives, knowing that it's a process that has gone ahead of us. Yes. And as against the, another person, like so, and that they were just living the natural life, but God was, the um, prophecy, was happening to them to the fact that they were not aware of it. Like for instance, David now for a long time he was looking at my I didn't know that the Amateur was enlightened. Yeah. He was like it was a conscious effort for him yes. towards purpose. Yes. But the life of random like, life saw that he was killing him, living his own natural life. Yes. And then God now guided him to purpose. What's that about an advantage for us that we are consciously aware going in line with purpose as against as against other the other side of people that are not doing the natural life, but they are also living a purposeful uh, just living a journey towards their purpose. Okay, so there's a difference between when you know something about your future and when you don't know and um, something about your future. The advantage of knowing something about your future is that it allows you prepare. Preparation is a major part of expectation. If you're expecting somebody today, tell me, what would you do? You prepare. You prepare, you check, clean the house. We expect the people tonight, we set the chairs. The advantage of knowledge of your future or something God has promised you by prophecy is that it allows you prepare for it. So, for example, if God has told you now that by your day you are going to pastor a church and you are going to pastor for me on the island or anywhere in the world or something, whatever God has told you, the right response is not to say, okay, Lord, I've heard you. The right thing is to start preparing do you understand? Yes, now. We said awesome, we come. The only way we know that we are really serious and expecting awesome is that we start to prepare. Quite aside to meet for vigils. So when you know, and someone that does not know, you have a chance of being better prepared than the person. The advantage of preparation is that it allows you to come out with better outputs. And secondly, be able to also mentor others. You know how you got it, you can repeat the pattern for others. When you don't know how you got there, you don't know how to mentor people that also want to pattern after you. So, but someone that just stumbled, just enter. He, he might not be conscious. He has to trace his, his steps back, start to see, was it like that? Was, but you that you know, you have the advantage of preparation. That is among other reasons. However, like you will see some people, most times, someone like maybe Muslims that get born again, they seem to come, that's why I said passion is what will eventually determine how much you will get from your purpose fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Because some Muslims become more passionate than some Christians that were born in Christian homes. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That former, uh, look at Tunipa Kari, very passionate. Pastor Tunipa Kari. Is, he can almost keep, even Bishop Edipo was former Alassan Olani, if you know the story. Yeah. Former Muslims, they are bloody with passion because Islam comes with a lot of passion with it. You understand? Mm -hmm. But that's why you see that they are not afraid of death. Mm -hmm. Once you are no longer afraid of dying, then you are talking passion. And that's why that film of Jesus Christ was called Passion of the Christ. It means he was ready to die. You know? So your passion should burn brighter. What happens with most people that know their future is that they relax. Mm. And since my future, God has said it, mm. I will get there. Mm. My future is bright. I will get there. My future is bright. I and they never see it. <laughs> Wonderful, colorful, I must get there. <laughs> Wonderful, colorful, I must get there. <laughs> Future is bright. I must get. Yeah, not seen. They are just singing it. They are not seeing it. Do you get the point? So yes, pro prophecy helps you prepare better, and now passion should follow that knowledge of your purpose. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was a good question, also, Sha. I hope you guys were blessed. Yes, sir. We're going to take the communion very shortly. I will close this service, okay? What I want to just say to us, just as my own word to you before we go, is that I want you to take this month with anger, holy anger, that anything that is not consistent with God's will for your life must leave this month. I want you to, I want it to be a reactional month for you. Now, there are months we just preach prophecy, praise God. I want this one to come with vexation of spirits. I told you, what you tolerate, you will accommodate. Yes. 
the nonsense you tolerate, you will accommodate it. Until you are angry. I remember one day like that. I can't remember exactly where, but there was one rat that was disturbing us in the room. I don't know if you know those type of things. The rat would just be going crack, cree, crack, crack, go, cree, crack, crack. I can't remember where. My our current houses that we've lived, we've been fortunate not to have rats. Mama doesn't even like them. You know, but yeah. So, but I think it was one house. I don't remember where, sincerely. So the, the rat just the one day my colleague, because I was not married, Seth, I think I my colleague just came in and said, Today this rat must die. Do you know we moved every it was around one o'clock in the night. You know it's around one o'clock in the night. He moved everything out until the rat was going and he killed it with his leg. Ta, 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 you know. <laughs> uh, holy anger. See, that rat will not check out until you check it out. And that rat might be poverty. That rat might be poor thinking. That rat might be ill health. That rat might be poor social skills. That rat might be something. Until you vex, you will not see a change. That's why I want to give you permission this month to be spiritually holy anger, if there's anything like that. This total well-being is a fight for total recovery. It's a fight for what is yours that has not been yours. It's a demand on God's gift on your life. Don't take it casually. Oh, yesterday night's prayer was powerful. Did yes, you know? sir! Woo! Woo! That prayer was... Yes, sir! I knew God was with us in that prayer. Yes, sir! If you're not there, you can't understand. That's what they used to say. It was, it was powerful. Yes, sir! Powerful. You can speak all the English. Look, until you take responsibility in prayer, you keep speaking English. I'm telling you. You say, I mean well. You say, I don't know. I try my best. Shut up. Shut up. Good people have died and they are dying now. Don't think that good things don't happen to I mean bad things don't happen to good people. Until we take it. And don't think it's just easy. So those that miss prayers yesterday and say, and now when we come, John, you don't find Kairos moments at your at your own recommendation. You can't create it. We can't fake it and say, guys, let's pray like Monday. It's, it's not <laughs> <laughs> say, guys, let's pray where we were like that deal. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. It's as the Holy Ghost comes. You know? Very potent. Ah! That I knew something took place. I knew. I knew. What am I just trying to encourage us with? That was just yesterday now. Uh, it's even looking like two days. It was yesterday. You know? So I'm, I just want to encourage you that respond to this month with a holy anger. Whatever is not supposed to be in your body is flushing out today in the name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, eh? that's why I say passion is a fuel. You know when these CSC people say, "Wow, wow, kid, me." For those that don't understand Yoruba, you will shout. Like someone that the door jammed his finger. I be an Do you see that? Yes, sir. What are they trying to do? They are trying to provoke you to pray with passion, yes, passionately. Is it not written that the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man make a tremendous power available? You are not serious. You are not serious. I know it's not every day you will shout your voice out. But this seven days fasting, shout it out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing will happen to you. Yes, sir. Nothing will happen to you. That's why the Holy Ghost comes when there's passion. You see a lot of us Christians feel so peace. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Please, do you understand what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Yes, sir. No, 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 it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Just soft touch, you know. You got, God's ears are not deaf. God's ears are not deaf. He hears our prayers. I never said God's ears are deaf. Oh. But there are some prayer. I tell you, sir, if you don't pray them passionately, you are losing something else. Yes, it's not every prayer you pray. It's so, so Lord, you just say. You, is that you don't want it. If you want it, oh God, you will shout. 
You will not even know when you are shouting. You will not even mind who you are shouting before. I'm telling you, this month, please, let's take it seriously. Yes, sir. If I'm to rename this month, another name for it, total well-being is taking it by force. That's, that, under that total well-being, what me I'm seeing is taking it by force. Who said it? Jesus. Since the time of John the Baptist. Nobody helped Jesus. Unprovoked. Jesus introduced violence. There is a kind of possession that comes easy. There is a possession that you take it over. Hey. When somebody is dragging your destiny with you. Somebody looks at you and says you cannot go beyond this point. Are you kidding with me? That you don't know them does not mean they don't exist. No, sir. Have you not seen some? And even if you don't know them and they don't even exist yet, pray them that they will never exist at you. Yes, sir. That when they are thinking of you, the fire you have released safe. You know, prayer can be stored. Yes. Uh-huh. Prayer can be stored like a cartridge. Mm. That you generate power. Because what, what happens in prayer is like when you are pumping something, the air is coming out there. You can store the energy. Yes, prayer is not a waste of time. Oh. The work you do here. Is answering there. And when you don't need to walk, the energy is storing there. That's how prayer works. Uh, oh, this year, I'm a flag. Continue. <laughs> no, destiny has a flag, man. Whether there's flag, thank you, Jeff. Uh, eh, whether, eh, my, your problem is does not know phlegmatic. Oh. No. Look, I, I like posh Christianity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I listen to me. I like the bad old sharp guy. Or guy. Have fire. Fire. Are you listening? Yes, uh, because you might like the surface. You see, the thing about submarines and good docks is that you will see the beauty on the surface. Now they are swimming, just gliding. The real work is going on under. The real work is going on. Your real work as a Christian is that prayer fire. And I might not always lead you like this. I'm just led to lead you like this. And that month I just say, give God thanks. And we're just smiling. Okay, behind that smile must be fire. Yes, must be stamina. Yes, must be standing strong. Yes, are you listening? Yes, not all this weakling thing that you are just uh, fellow shop. Oh, you are not serious. You are not serious. You will be vexed. Do you see what Jesus Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane? Go and read it. The Bible says he was sweating pop ups like blood. Why? The Son of God. Who are the source it? What it is? God. Was praying like that. Why? Because if you not pray like that, the hell, hell, grave, and Sheol will not release him. They will not release him. Where are you going to? But he knew that there's something coming up from for him. Look, when you know what's ahead of you, pray. Oh, pray. Don't let the deception of laziness extend to your prayerlessness. I beg you. This month is a month of taking it by force. Let us even give it a shot. Paradventure is the next level of this church. Paradventure is your next level. Don't pray this prayer. If you will not pray, don't pray. If you will pray, pray. Scatter for this more. Ah, you think it's ordinary. Let your prayer make me feel like praying. Provoke my spirit to righteousness. So you know, some people's response can make you stop praying. I know this type of discussion might not be for everybody. But those that it is for know themselves. Shall we rise to our feet? That's all I want to share with you. You hear my voice. The next time you hear my voice is online. I want you to please turn this session to pray. We're closing very shortly. Are you, are you here with me tonight? Can you just prophesy? This one is prophecy. In tongues. But don't whisper. Do you understand? Yes, Open up your mouth. Let us pray. Yes, Open up your mouth and pray.
Jesus' name we pray. I said in Jesus' name we pray. You know, sometimes when we pray like this, you might not really know what you are doing. But I want you to know that we are led by the Spirit of God. Yesterday, I led my leaders through a message when we were listening together. And the man of God was confirmed what I used to say. That when we say you should say amen, it's not because we just want to say amen, we just calculated it. Say amen. No. There is a spiritual conversation that goes on from the pulpit to the pew. Are you listening? Yes, put up your right hand. You put up your right. It looks like as if ah, he just wants to put us in punishment. No. There is a spiritual conversation that is going on. Are, are you listening? Yes, sir. That's why I know that that thing in your family that has been disturbing you, tonight is coming down in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, one of the things I have to know is that we don't just gather in vain. God says, I have not called the sons of Jacob to seek me in vain. He told us clearly, I don't just gather there and say, just gather and sit down. No. He said, because I have something to do. Isaiah 45, verse 13, I think. So God would just gather us in vain. No. There is a reason we're here. And one of those things about why we're here is not even just to fulfill purpose, but to correct some things that are foundational. Yes, things that you can't correct by yourself. Yes, now, one of them is your mindset. The way you think. Another one is your proclivities. The things that you are vulnerable to. Another one is your appetites. The things that you desire. Another one is your kind of friends. Those are things God wants to change. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Your mindsets, your proclivities, your appetites, your friendships, your mindsets. I pray that from tonight, you will notice the difference. Yes. Can we say that name a little better than that? Yes. One guy, I went to the Orioke one time like that, um, and there was this guy that was singing. Very nice song. I was somewhere in one corner, but I had this song. I, I think it's Sister Bolito's first cousin. I was just saying, are you no sir? We will let me Larry. In your loss, we will let Uncle Jesus say, I like that holy is the one I like the most. Is that holy loss? We will let I hear only. What that means, let me interpret for those that may not understand Yoruba, is that the world said you cannot be meaningful, you cannot be useful. Um, people said you cannot amount to much. The prophet, that's the one I like. He said, The prophet even added to it and said, Your life will not have a meaning. I like what he said. He said, KSC, ah, that's it. I was inside the bush. I can't forget. You know, when you have prayed, as my sister, you know, if you go to Rio, I need to go. We need to visit Rio soon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some people will show up. Who, uh, <laughs> see that guy's your calling. <laughs> uh, I don't know the guy. Ah, hello, sir. I said, what is this guy singing? I've never heard this song before. It was on the mountain I heard it. Ah, I said, what is it? He said, KSC, that is, take notes. God did not say what that prophet said to me. Ah, that thing blessed my heart. I was praying. I can't forget that day. I said, what is this one singing song? I know, sir. We will let me like it. No, okay. He's, he's like, it's not, we don't, we don't do much of this. Like, I don't know what Ah, what am I saying tonight? What God has not said about your life? No demonic power will prevail against you in the name of Jesus. I want us to take this month with some vehemence. You know, some people look at you and they believe they know everything about you. Nobody knows you, sir. Nobody knows who you are. The word of God says, the word of God says, no man knows the things of a man, except the spirit of the man of being man. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows all about you. Nobody knows 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 you. Nobody you might, you might think I'm just trying to shake oh. your energy. No! Yes, Some things will not leave you until you get. Yes, yes. yes. It will not go. I told you that man that came in his church oh, was praying, praying. One suddenly, that thing with a pig's head just fell down. Oh. Boom. I told you the story. Yes, sir. Where is this one come from? Which one is this one again with a pig's head? Now, did get out of here. And the guy was begging, can I stay? You know that, you know it happened that those demons were begging Jesus. Yes, that sir. don't chase us out of here. Demons don't want to go. Yes, it's a lot of torture for a spirit not to have habitation. Yes. It's a very big torture. It's a very big, some don't mind just quoting. I will not cause trouble, just leave me here. It's a terrible thing for a spirit to be a vagabond. I'm telling you, I know spiritual things, sir. I, you don't stand on the altar of God without knowing these things. It's a very terrible thing for spirits to be vagabonds. Read Matthew 12 from 43. You understand? No, well, you can bring it up, whatever. From 43. What am I saying? They don't mind staying somewhere and causing that small problem that will just continually be your boss. That no matter your testimony, that boss will be there. Vehemently tonight. I stand as God's servant. Such powers are broken in the name of Jesus. Look, God cannot, God cannot be pointing our hearts to it, even because he's trying to get rid of it. They've been hiding for so long. You will never suspect. They don't mind saying there.
Maintain comportment. But when you come to God's presence in prayer, I beg barrage small. Barrage small. Look, let me just, that's the thing. People just think that we just maintain comportment because we ask things. I don't ask things. When you see me pray, I'm like a village man. That's why I don't like praying publicly because I know I will embarrass myself. <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean. You will not believe it's me. Koi do elarani. Koi do any. If you are truly sincere, you will know that enough is enough in your life. Enough is enough. Do you know that one of the things I used to say to myself, and I'm saying this prophetically, the devil planted a picture of a child that would be aut aut autistic on a woman. And the child came out, and truly the child was autistic. You know how these things are powerful? Now, mind go confirmed. Go we'll just say for real life. She started praying. From, from uh, Kilankwe, from Lebo. And before her very eye, after the nurse has considered how that would come, she would come, 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 come. Started praying. Stay praying, stay praying, stay praying, continue with vehemence. The child was still very young, so it was a good time to construct the child's life. Yes, Soon enough, the doctor that didn't want to tell the woman before, that came and said, <coughs> I don't know what happened to your child, but somewhere along the line, something happened. Mm. She would have kept that autistic child and it would be a problem. For life. I'm not saying that autistic children are not children, but you can do without autism. Yes, sir. Can I hear your amen? Yes, and listen, those that have, they are not devils. Mm. They are not devils. And Satan doesn't mind giving me a reason why you're not able to have God faithfully again. Pray now so you won't be praying then. Pray. You think that those that have it, they are because they are careless or they are not lucky. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? It's not paining you. As I'm talking now, you're saying we should close. No problem, we'll close. I'm just telling you that yours might not be that. Some, yours might be somebody has um, have a pastor friend. You see him looking very touched. He was just telling us, he said, he said he struggled with poverty. In his mind, when he's looking like this, he's looking like you. You are going to die. In <laughs> Once it has starts people's mind, I know you, you are very touched. No problem. Once it wants to hear you, to hear you, thank you, they will hear you, Hey, you know what you? With your money, they will hear you. Look, lift up your hands and say, Father, Father this one let it be to that well-being. Well By the power of the Holy Ghost, I obtain mercy. I, obtain mercy. I, enjoy, fullness I enjoy fullness of the blessing of the, blessing. Of the, gospel, of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Jesus. So full blessing, sir. As you are praying this month, these next few days, how many days left? Five days, whatever days left. Please put in your picture. As you are praying, be pumping your future with bright pictures. 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 You are Spread don't know that God is of you. How well do you want it? How well? How well do you want it? How well? How well? Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight's communion is for divine health. Yes, so we'll be doing this once more. Tonight's one is for divine health. Whatever is not in the body of Christ will not be your body. Yeah. And I'm talking specifically any sickness that Christ does not carry, anything that should not happen to his body will not happen to your body. Yeah. Nobody took his body to be lacerated. Yeah. Nobody will lacerate your body. Yeah. Please understand that you may take a lot of care of yourselves. Uh, uh, so you know, this is not because you don't take care. Uh, <laughs> If you are driving well and the person that is driving on is not driving well, you know it's not your fault. It might not be your fault, but you are a victim. This month there will be no victim. I want us to just begin to engage in communion now. Eat with faith in your heart. Are you listening? Accept that nothing, your body will not scratch a nail. I don't know if you, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying? Scratch a nail. Or weak will catch your body. Or blood just flow. No, 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 never that. Do you believe that tonight? Ministers, let's take your communion and let's take process. As Blessing it out, hallelujah, it's popular. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let that amen go a little better than that. Let it go a little louder than that one more time. The loudest that you can one more time. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Glory to God. Please let's be seated in God's presence. Amen. Let's take our seats. God, take God's presence. Forgive me for taking your time. But I will not be around because I'm going for some conferences. I'm collecting my words tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Collect your words. Amen. I'm collecting collect some of my words too. Different certificates. Nice, nice things and all that. So I'll be in Abuja. My mama will teach us on Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Please, let's invite our friends to church. One of the things I've confessed to you guys is that we are building a team for a great church. All of these things are still grand work. Believe me, we are strong. We are strong. You know, if you even check where, where we are even walking from and talking from, it's some people's desired dream. <laughs> so, but believe me, this is nothing compared to where we are going to. You, even you know that you see visions of this church. Yes, you see visions of this church prospering. Yes, Doing very well. Yes, on every side. On every side. Yes, Amen. Now, your watch scripture for this week is Psalm 71, verse 21. The Bible reading passage is Deuteronomy chapter 1 to 34. The, 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 the writer word, that's the hashtag word, is I will do whatever it takes. That is whatever it takes. Is that sure. You know, last time it was everything counts. This time it's whatever it takes. But before that, I, whatever it takes is I will do whatever it takes. You understand? So you might just be seeing dot, 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 whatever it takes as hashtag. But the real fullness of that statement is I will do whatever. So we might not write I will do all the time, but it is I will do whatever. So what people can see hashtag whatever it takes. You understand? But you know I will do whatever it takes. And I want you to be conscious that this month is a month that nothing will escape you. Yeah. Nothing will escape you. You know, sometimes some blessings escape you. Sometimes, but this one we are catching it violently. Let's give our friends to God. Any time in the house, you're casting your time, please just stand in the Let's quickly pray. And then let's close. Tithing is good. Don't see like I, I pay my tithe to God, you are owing me. That's not how it is. Let's see the love affair between you and God. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't keep it back. Amen. Don't keep it back. Don't, the, the beauty of all this Christian work is that you get results. Your faith givings always, 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 I repeat, always provokes a harvest. If you are standing, please, and online, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Just prophesy what you desire God to do for you from this your obedience, this your act of obedience. We feel with divine energy. That the Lord will bless your act of obedience in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you pray sincerely and subtly? That Lord, I obtain grace, I obtain mercy. Somebody needs an envelope for something, please. You know, prophesy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call for these ones and their names to be blessed. Amen. Let the fortune of giving be their portion. Amen. Let them always be counted and numbered among the givers for life. Amen. Let them never be ex givers. Amen. Let them always have to give. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. You, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let's, let's take our seats. You know the meaning of ex-giver. He used to give. Means he no longer gives. You will have to give in Jesus' name. All right, let's do our transfers to our offerings and all of that. If you are fulfilling any pledge, let's just let's declare. All right, the giving of the church is important. As I am a blessing to you, you should be a blessing to me. As I am a blessing to you, you should be a blessing to the ministry. Don't, don't let it not, not cross your hearts that you should give. Not because I'm in need. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you're saying, oh, I, you give to the church. When you give to the church, you're not giving to me. That's why the account numbers are distinguished. All right? <laughs> there's a church account. There's a duality for church account. And there's a personal account. They go to different kind of accounts. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you took, I took a pledge last week, redeem your pledge. Redeem your obligation. It's not for just demonstration. Give. Try. Try. Commit to it. When there's a joy in that obedience. May you not lose it to Jesus. Amen. All right, if you have your offerings or you've done it, can you raise up your phone as a son? Sign, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We call every giver blessed and your name glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I did announce the account to give to for the pledges of last week. It's this account. Zenith account. One, that's 10 12 0 2 3 8 3 2. 10 12 0 2 3 8 2. 1 0 1 2 0 2 3 8 3 2. Whichever way you come, it's the account that will take in different kind of receiving or givings or something. This is our regular account for your offering. This too can be used for offering, but please distinguish what you are giving for. Is that okay, please? If you are giving for PR, might write there PR. We will just want to be a little more accountable. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to just mix everything up. Uh -huh. And we don't want to be listing 17 accounts just because we want to give. Just make it simple. Zenith and GT. Dollars. Uh -huh. Simple. Straightforward. Even me said, it's GT I put there. In case you want to bless what's about the day you like, you know, some of you are very kind hearted. So please, I want to urge you that do me a favor, make sure that you don't let anything distract your heart and that you don't get distracted from the knowledge that God's house is part of your investment. When you give to God, it's not a loss. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Even when you give to man, it's not a loss. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Uh, if I give you something now, it's not a loss now. Yeah. Abby, at least I've invested something in your future. Tomorrow, we will say, ah, that man gave me something, you know, let alone God. My son and I, my son was asking me, you know, some brilliant questions on Sunday or this Sunday. He said, so daddy, this giving thing, how do we do it? And he was asking, I said, there are five people you should not fail to give. Number one, you should not fail to give to the poor. Don't fail to give to the poor. The Bible says, when you give to the poor, learn to Lord. Psalm 41. He says, the Lord will remember you in your sick bed. When you are sick, you raise you up. Hey, from the prayers of the poor for you, sickness is gone. Imagine. Imagine. What a blessing. Eh? What a blessing.
blessing. Okay, number two, parents. When you give to your parents, the Bible says honor your father and your, your, your parents. It says, for this is the, for this is the first commandment with blessings. And what's the first thing on it? That I, as the days of God, and I might be well with you in the land of the living. First commandment we promise. There's a blessedness to it. Sometimes it's only going to be well with you when your parents say it is well with you. Add you till you die. Okay, my parents are no longer like, you ask me to your parents. It's a good job, Jesus. Yes, I mean it. I mean it. Okay, give to the prophet. Do you know what happens to the prophet? The Bible says you receive the same reward the prophet receives. <laughs> the same reward. Everything has its own blessing. Okay, 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 okay. What happens? The next one, so I've said poor. Eh? For the booba, God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. God bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you for me. Thank you. So the poor, your parents, eh? Your prophet. Alex, let me tell them. Alex, let me tell them, please. Yeah. The next one, as if you know by the way. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> next one is the kingdom projects. They are all peace. When there's something going on in God's house. The Bible says the one you kept that you can't give to anyone. He said the one you kept and blown it. <laughs> don't let him give it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. So kingdom will not have it. You too will not have it. I'm not the one that said any of these things. So. Uh -huh. Then the last one is your regular givings. Your regular givings gives you what I would consider the, the joy of being part of those that seek the good of the kingdom. Yes. Look, every giving, none waste. Just like every prayer, none waste. Just like every fasting, none waste. None. And read Matthew 6. That's what Jesus Christ spent the whole chapter talking about. So when we talk about giving, don't fall a victim of poverty mentality. Real rich people know the giving. When people are hearing all these people, don't give. They just say, I beg, I beg, no, they confuse me. They know. It's you that you don't have any direction. You are not guided by anything. You just believe that everything is anyhow. No, it's not true. It's not true. Some giving, Jesus was talking in Matthew 25. He said, because you don't give these things to people that were poor, he said, you have done it unto me. Do you remember that story? Yes. I said, because you don't give these things, this list, that you have, so that's your sin symbol, is what God is looking at. Like, this one, you have done, he said, it's to me you've done it to. Don't worry. Don't worry, we're taking records. Taking records. Now, when I say give to the poor, it's not about giving to the beggar on Allen Street. Thing. That's not poor. I listen to you. Some of those who you are giving to, that's possible terrorism. Yes. Make your giving an organized, structured giving. I can't, tonight is not for the, the discussion. Make it an organized, structured giving that you know that it's truly feeding the poor, like a virtual life foundation. You need to know how much mama commits to that project. And it's not yesterday she started. It's not yesterday. It's not 10 years ago. So you give in a systematic way. And your giving will amount to something. It's not about I gave first time. God, you serve I had to. That's how it works. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe one day I will teach on this thing properly. And I will explain it properly to us. So that you understand that we're not playing. Why you don't let people. In fact, even deep in our heart, we know there is power to give it. But we just want someone to clear our doubts. Clear it for us. What is this one for? What is this one for? When you give your first thing, the Bible says the Lord will grant your storehouse that your plenty will never finish. So this is Proverbs 39. It can be argued in Ezekiel chapter 34. So these things are there for our learning. Not that you'll be a spiritual person. Oh God, ask me if you are broke. I'm telling you, it can be very frustrating. It can be very frustrating to buy granite. You are considering how much? <laughs> buy granite. That you now buy one of nine hundred naira. <laughs> so I'm just trying to say, listen. No, you see, because I don't want us to be empty, empty theoretical victors here. Look, after praying, it feels good to be able to bring out Malachi. If I hand my wallet for you here, you know that this man is loaded. And I spend mint. I don't even know when last I touched anything less than mint. The granite said I bought granite from today. Then I like granite. When I bought the granite, she was like, ah, thank you, sir. For buying mint. I collected a granite. I was like, thank you, sir. Thank you. Ah. You know, get it differently. Because this one is not just uh, granite. So we're not talking like broke people. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The Walada, I don't have everything, you know, but he has always been my supply. He has always my supply. I'm just saying it to encourage your heart. Be it. Don't just be a fast, fabulous Christian. Be a fervent giver. Be a fervent faster. Make it a lifestyle, not a project. So that when we do things, finish you. If you never finish, you never finish. I hope this thing bless your heart. Yes, now I call for the blessing upon your life. That as you go into this week, the Lord will help you. Amen. You will meet with the right people. Amen. The right people will meet with you. Amen. I reassure you of the favor of God. Amen. That you will not lose favor. Amen. That people that matter are the ones that will love you. Amen. Forget and forgive the nonsense people that have been saying rubbish. But from now, you will notice the favor of God. Amen. As you go from this place, you will hear a voice guiding you what to do. Amen. Telling you where to go. Amen. Helping you live consciously. Amen. Helping you to live with self-awareness. May you not irritate the things Amen. that matter to you. May the things that matter to you not irritate to you. Amen. May God be your portion. Amen. I bless you with the blessings of a father. Amen. You will not be a vagabond. Amen. You may not have had a spiritual father before now. From today, I'm your father. Amen. And I declare that the Lord will keep you. Amen. And the Lord will keep me. Amen. And the Lord will keep all of us. Amen. Thank you, eternal father. Amen. As a church, we go from levels to levels. Amen. We go from grace to grace. Amen. We multiply in finances. Amen. We multiply in numbers. Amen. We multiply in significance. Amen. Let Jesus be glorified. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's say phone charge. Oh, wait, wait, what's your name? Um, Maru. I think she's the first. Let's give her a round of applause. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed the church today. Sorry with time. Eh? Please. But it's not um, a boring session. Invest into the spirit, okay? But please, we hope when you be back, okay? I'd like to pastor you if you don't have a pastor. I'm here for that.
God bless you. All right, people of God, let's go to the grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied to us to the knowledge of God our Father and of Jesus Christ our Lord. So, the application you see after the meeting, I would like to see it, okay? So, let's just say hello to you briefly. So, say to your neighbor, grace and peace. Grace and peace be multiplied to you to the knowledge of God our Father and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, finally, upon yourself, if you can, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God my Father. Now, Jesus Christ, my Lord. If you're truly blessed tonight, please do me a favor. Shout out to the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I love God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Bless you, Ida. God bless you. That was powerful. That was powerful. That was powerful. You see that everybody perceives that there is grace in life. God bless you. You come on. God bless you. Come get ready for the next thing. God bless you. That was very good. God bless you. God bless you. Good Amen. God bless you. Amen. Not tonight. We closed. We closed. I will tell you next time. Don't worry. Eh? Mom's picture too. God bless my dear. Yes. How are you? Oh, why did you say? Eh? Okay, 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 okay.